Hey guys, it's Vanessa with Sendicon. I'm here today to do a quick video on our safety data sheets binder. Uh, some people refer to them as SDS binders. Uh, past In the past, it was also referred to as MSDS. So, but they're safety data sheets on all the products and chemicals that we use. So let me start by saying that this is a three inch binder that we got from Amazon, relatively cheap. We went the three inches because we decided to laminate our pages and that added a lot of thickness. We have two other, we have two other binders that have the exact same data sheets in them that we did not laminate and those fit in one and a half inch binders. So uh, for our main vehicle, we decided to laminate just because uh, our hands are, it could be grubby or easy to wipe, kind of waterproof, things of that nature. So let me start by saying this. I did put alphabet dividers. You can't very, you cannot see them great when looking on downward this way, but they are visible. And if you were uh, scrolling through looking for something, you would be able to find them. One of the things that I learned in this process is if you have your files alphabetically named in the computer that takes out the step of having to later alphabetize all of these sheets, which I learned unfortunately after the fact. So there's my little takeaway helpful tip is alphabetize your names in the computer before you print them and that way they will be alphabetized when they are printed and ready to go into your book. The next thing I wanted to mention is, right, this. So in terms of the names, like you have Arm & Hammer Baking Soda, we're filing ours under Arm & Hammer, but you may want to file it under Baking Soda. The other one, another good example is the isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I don't think you're going to want to put it under isopropyl because I don't know how many people would search for that. They may search for alcohol or rubbing alcohol. So you have a couple options here. You can either do three copies and put one under A for alcohol, one under R for rubbing alcohol, and one under I. So that way it fits everybody searching. Uh, however, that will add pages. So it's one of those um, personal decisions, I guess. We put ours under rubbing alcohol. And as you can see, it's not alphabetized in here. So Fortunately, most of it is, so I didn't have too much alphabetizing to do, but just something to think with when you're compiling your book. I'm trying to think if there's another one. Some of these, um, like the multi-purpose cleaner, that's made by Benefect, so you may want to put you may want to put one copy of it under B and one copy under multi-purpose. It's just kind of how you guys refer to your chemicals and what your crew knows so that they know what to search for. I know some people create these things specifically by what's on the label. So any stranger could come in and just look at the label and look at the book and find it that way. So it's just, that is a personal preference point. And no matter how you set it up, you wanna make sure your crew is trained on it and they're grooved in. So if an emergency does happen, they're not like trying to find what they're looking for in all these amounts of pages. The next thing I want to show you is the SDS, sorry, there is a glare because it is laminated. The SDS sheet itself um, for each product, they are pretty uniform. So like section one is the identification, section two is the hazards identification, section three, section four is your first aid. So in this case, what I did, sorry, this glare is awful. What I did is I highlighted the name of the product so it jumped out at somebody. I highlighted the emergency telephone numbers um, so that they weren't looking through all of this text, trying like, where's the number? You know, they're already frantic. Uh, something got in their eye or somebody swallowed it or there's some emergency. They're already frantic. So I tried to make it as easy as possible by highlighting the important things. So you'll see the first aid measures. There's some on the second page. So like what to do if it's inhaled, there's what to do if it gets into your eye, what to do if it's swallowed, all those I highlighted. So like on the second page, 
you, you'll see right there, I highlighted um, that as well. So the next thing I did is I put a paper clip because a lot of these SDSs are not just a single sheet, they're multiple sheets. In fact, we have one in here that's 16 pages. So I didn't want somebody trying to get to the first page of the next one and having to go through 16 pages looking for it. So I did a paper clip. I will recommend that if you're laminating to use plastic paper clips because the metal ones seem to slide. So I need to update this. This is something we've discovered over time is that the, the metal ones slide really easy. So if you, if you flip, let's say this page too hard, that's just gonna pop right off. I'm assuming the plastic ones will hold a little bit better on laminated pages. So just a quick, I'm not gonna go through the whole entire book, but you can see I did do the highlighting and um, just on all of them, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing, there were a few as I was, right before I laminated it, I noticed I missed the telephone number. So just, you know, be thorough, otherwise you either have one that doesn't have a doesn't have a highlighted number or uh, you'll have to redo it it depends if you're um, picky about that so I'm pretty uniform I like things so if I make a mistake I'll redo the I'll redo it instead of just deal with it another factor is we don't have chemicals that start with C right but I left the tabs in here in case we ever do add something that does start with C I'm on this, I'm on the opinion if you, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Because I don't know that I will find these exact dividers later. So I don't wanna have to buy a new packet and then redo all the dividers just because I added one chemical that starts with C and then my C, my C tab is different from all the others. Personal preference, some people are not as picky as I am. The next thing I was going to mention is Okay, let me see if I can get a good shot of this. <clears throat> I cannot. Um, in any event, we had, here you can see on, on here, we had a hole punch that only fit 11 inch long paper. And that, um, that did not work for the laminated pages because you have this extra, right? So you have all this extra that doesn't fit into the hole punch because the guide was literally right up here and right down here. So we bought another hole punch and the way, then what I discovered is if I lined the top of this up with the guide on the hole punch, all the pages hung off the bottom of the book, which was very frustrating because it, it didn't have the adjuster where you can make the holes go up and down. So that guide was kind of useless on our hole punch. So what I ended up doing is I ended up aligning the, the bottom of the hole punch with the bottom of the sheet of paper or the, the laminated page, right? So I just slid it in there into the hole punch. I made sure all the pages were nice and perfectly lined up. And then I put my thumb like this so I could feel the bottom, uh, I could feel the bottom edge of the hole punch and I could feel the bottom edge of the paper. And then that, allowed for the pages to fall nicely in the book mostly centered and it also it kept that uniformity so my my pages are all pretty much hole punched the same so I don't have a bunch of pages that are some are lower some are higher and then your book is kind of zigzaggy that that would drive me bananas so this is how I overcame that obstacle and it worked out well you do not have to laminate your pages I just figured uh, we have, I mean, we have, we're in the restoration industry, so our crews are kind of rough on things. And so I just wanted this to last a lot longer in our main vehicle. We do have two other books that are not laminated, and those go in vehicles that do not get used as often as our main vehicle. So that I think that is all on the books. The other thing that I have planned, sorry, we will go through this book. Um, probably once a year and just make sure that we have the most updated, I'm sorry for all my turning, the most updated um, issue, right? Because you don't want outdated, you don't want outdated information. Like, I don't know how often these things get updated, but you do want to check that 
you have the most updated version so your your guys are in the in the field safe as possible the other thing that i will say is we have a few pages in here for chemicals that we plan on using we just haven't gotten around to ordering and that's fine like i said it's better to have it and not need it than to not have it and need it so with sds sheets it is important that every chemical or product that you use in the field you have a sheet for because that's where you'll really get faulted if you don't so no one's going to call you out on having a sheet for a chemical you don't use but they, you will get called out for having a chemical with no sheet. So you want to make sure that if, as soon as you add a new chemical as part of your system to get a SDS sheet into the book right away. Lastly, what I plan on doing for quick reference is I do plan on doing a table of contents of what is in here so that we can quickly compare our table of contents to our products in the trucks, on the shelves, in the warehouse, and things like that so that I'm not flipping through these hundreds of pages like okay do we have do it do we have a data sheet for this chemical that's on the shelf I can just see I can just see from a table of contents and what I plan to do is note when it was updated like what what version so that I can just grab the table of contents when I'm looking online and see what products I need to do an update on and then if I have to print it, then I know I can just swap out that page. So just trying to streamline and make everything as efficient as possible. I hope this helps you in some way. If you have questions, uh, anything like that, drop a comment. And then um, I wanted to also let you know that your safety data sheets, you can just Google. So Google your product name with a colon and then safety data sheets. Okay, yeah, so Here's an example. So if you wanted to find your SDS sheet for a specific chemical, the way I did it is you type in your chemical name, a colon, and then SDS, and then obviously hit enter, and you should come up with, it should be one of the first ones. So, sorry, I'm trying to see this through here. Here we go. So you open that up and then you can download it or, um, yeah, you can download it if you wanted to find non-color ones or ones that I don't know you can you can make this a whole project or you can just take the first thing that you get I tried to make sure things were black and white so if you print you may want to print in color just to have a colorful book or you may not maybe you want to print in black um, black ink only which is what we did and then last oh another thing I just thought of is so I had to reprint we printed these at Office Depot which are laser printers and so it made sure it was helpful in that the ink didn't smear when I did the highlighter. I did have a few pages that I messed up on and had to reprint at home. And we have a jet printer, um, an inkjet printer. So just in your highlighting process, just double check. Like just double check before you, you laminate and invest all your time that it didn't smear all of your ink and make it illegible because then it serves no purpose. So this is, um, this is kind of a labor of love in that, you know, we really did take our time and we tried to make it as professional and usable as possible so that um, our guys, you know, again, you don't want your guys out in the field with stuff in their eyeballs and not knowing what to do or you end up with a big spill and you don't know how to clean it up and stuff like that. So just there you have it. Again, I hope that helps. Good luck. If you have questions, drop a comment. I, I'm, I'd love to hear from you.